Hey everyone, it's Christine here with Mindful Parenting Revolution. And today's topic that has been coming up a lot with families that I'm working with is overwhelm and burnout. So I want to talk a little bit about some really powerful ways to reframe overwhelm and burnout. I do think it's really important to research and learn more about burnout and overwhelm in general. There are lots of um, fun and really educational books that have been written about this recently and I really loved learning more about what burnout is and where it comes from and the fact that it's like personal and institutional and all of these really great discoveries. However, one thing I noticed when I was in that learning process was that it didn't feel good. It actually increased my resentment, my anger about all of the things that I couldn't control, um, both in our culture, in my own family, and in my learning and um, the like, behaviors that I had adopted. It didn't necessarily free me from overwhelm and burnout. I loved learning about it, but it didn't necessarily give me the tools to feel better about my busy, busy life. So today I want to talk about some of the easy ways that feel a lot better to me in terms of reframing and moving through overwhelm and burnout. If you are someone who often experiences overwhelm, leave a message in the comments. Let me know. Overwhelm's my thing. These are some of the things that overwhelm me. Let's make a list. I love knowing that we're not alone. And I think that that is really great. If you are someone who has experienced burnout, and maybe you quit your job, maybe you left a unhelpful relationship. Maybe you had a huge shift and transformation in how you do things. Please share that with us. What helped you with your burnout or what was your burnout rock bottom? Those things I think are really powerful to share and for us to see and be seen in this process. If we have time at the end, I'll share a little bit about my story but um, many of you already know it, and I want to focus today on the things that we can do. So I've got three big changes that I made that really helped me shift the burnout needle. And generally speaking, I would say that my life is very, very full, and I feel very little overwhelm about it mainly because I'm not looking at the big picture anymore and thinking about how there's just nothing but this giant to-do list that's never going to end, and thus I never deserve to rest. One of the things that really helps me shift the paradigm of burnout in my experience, which is a lot of um, anticipatory anxiety and um, just not being able to enjoy life because of the weight of all that I need to do and all the people that I need to please and all the perfection that I need to sprinkle upon the world. The things that really helped me to shift that was sort of noticing that I need, I was getting too big picture and I need to just come into this moment. So hence mindfulness, right? Just really being present with this moment and what it requires of me. And then also really prioritizing the way I want to feel in that moment, in every moment, that even when I'm crossing things off my list, even when I'm taking action towards my check boxes, I want to feel good about it. I want to feel good feelings while I'm doing that instead of feeling rushed, anxious, worried, judged, fearful, or just resentful about all of the things that I need to do on my list. So one of the things that really helps me is to adopt what I like to think of as a sacred yes and a holy no philosophy. And this is the idea, I teach this often in yoga about really identifying what is a no for you 
and making that a holy no. It has gravity. It is a spiritual no. I am choosing out of this because that is going to create space for sacred yes. Holy no. I honor it. I bow to it. It is going to improve my life to say no to this thing because it allows me space for a sacred yes. Then you get to decide what the yes is and you make that conscious and you make that aligned and you make that special by really meaningfully choosing in to what serves you what gives you energy, what helps you feel excited and inspired and light and easy. Choosing into those things, saying yes to them is sacred. So honoring that, prioritizing that, and not just moving through life like you're in a ping pong game back and forth, back and forth without any control over the things that you say yes and no to. There are so many things you do not have control over in life, but what you say yes to and what you say no to is in your control. So start getting really clear and aligned with your holy no so that you can create space for your sacred yes. Another thing that I really like to think about in terms of mindset and reframing is anytime I start to feel the pressure, the physical pressure of overwhelm in my chest or even in my jaw, I will notice that is where I feel overwhelm in my body. My jaw, my the back of my neck, my chest starts to feel heavy. And that's the time for me to say, whew, I'm noticing overwhelm. I think that I must be focused on the wrong thing. I'm focused on taking actions. I'm looking at or I'm even thinking about all the things that I have to do and I can't even see the end of the list and I'm starting to get overwhelmed. I feel claustrophobic and I want to just put my head in the sand because there's too much, which means I'm focused on the actions. I'm focused on trying to clear my list, wanting to see the end. When really, if I shift my focus away from action and into how I'm feeling and getting aligned, being grounded, being calm, being clear, that's going to help me get through the list quicker. And it's going to make it feel better while I do it, right? I can hate vacuum and hate scrub the toilet and I can hate load the dishwasher, But that is not going to feel nearly as good as if I get aligned with the feeling good, excited, inspired, dedicated to taking care of myself. This is also what I'm trying to teach my kids. Every time they put their laundry away, I don't say, thanks for putting your laundry away. I say, thanks for taking care of yourself and your things. We're all learning how to do that. I know there's a lot of other things that you would like to be doing, but taking care of yourself feels good. And it's part of being a healthy person. So if you're focused on the actions and checking all the boxes and you're feeling resentful and awful and ugly and the tension is all around, how can you get into a better feeling place? And do those things from a place of alignment. And you know what? For me, that means a little hint. If I am really aligned, I have way more energy. I'm way more motivated. I get way more done. I might not be linearly going through the list of things to do. I might be like, oh, that I just cannot do right now. It's a task. It will be done. I trust that I will be inspired and energized to do that one day. But today I'm going to knock all these things out because I feel like boom, boom, boom. I have the energy for gardening and wheelbarrows and shovels. And then some days there is just no energy for that. I'd way rather be talking to you and doing client calls or writing articles and getting things moving in terms of my parenting world. Okay? So 
are you focused on action or are you focused on the way you feel? And then the third thing that I really felt a huge change around when I finally acknowledged there was no trophy for getting to the end of my list of things to do. In fact, it's a terrible feeling to finish your list of things to do and be like, okay, that's it for the day. And then the minute you've tossed that into the trash, the next thing pops into your mind that you need to do for tomorrow or next week or the week after. There's always going to be something else. If you're sourcing your sense of productivity, happiness, accomplishment, and purpose on the fact that you've checked every box off of your list of things to do, you are going to be very disappointed because you're never going to get to the end. The next day is always going to present you with another list of things to do, especially as a parent. It's never ending. So I stopped thinking of it as a trophy for finishing the thing. I was never going to get to the bottom of my list. There was never going to be an award for that. I wasn't going to get to wear a medal. But the trophy is feeling good while you do it. If I could crack through this whole list of things to do, feeling inspired and excited and purposeful, then that was a win. That was success for me, not checking off all of the things. And every once in a while, I really just can't do it. And that's when I know, like, maybe I need to add rest into the to-do list. And rest looks different for all of us. Those of you who know me know that I don't sit down much. If I am sitting down, I am usually asleep or watching Netflix. I very rarely take a rest. When I am resting, the way that I get rest is creativity with friends. It's taking hikes in the woods. It is sitting in my sauna with a group of my favorite people. It's organizing and implementing potlucks. I am not a rester in the common sense of like, I like to sit quietly and do nothing. That's not restful for me. That doesn't rejuvenate me. So identifying what does rejuvenate you is going to help you with the energy to deal with your overwhelm. So that's part of the, there's no trophies for finishing your list, but there are trophies for feeling good and knowing what you need. So Sometimes when I talk to parents about their overwhelm or their feeling burned out, I'm like, well, can you get a house cleaner to take over this for you? What can you say no to? But really, sometimes the conversation comes down to what do you need to say yes to in order to find the feelings of inspiration, excitement, creativity, and rest in a creative or a spiritual way. Does this all make sense? This is a lot and it's something that you can hear once and need to practice again and again and again. You need to hear it again and again and again. So talk to someone about this conversation. Talk to someone about their overwhelm and help to remind each other it's not about the trophy, it's not about getting through my list and it's not about all the things I have to say no to and deny myself so I can have the time to meet everyone else's needs. Because that's the old me used to think that that's how I overcame my overwhelm. I had to meet my children's needs, my partner's needs, my business needs, which meant I had to say no to all of these things that fulfilled me. And I've, I've, completely redefined overwhelm for myself. What I know is that I'm always going to have a list of things to do. I'm always going to have tasks I need to accomplish. And it's up to me to take care of myself and decide what things are going to feed my soul, what things are going to give me joy, what things are going to energize me. And that will provide me with the inner strength or the physical strength that I need to then get through the things that aren't so joyful and wonderful. Because that's part of life. Part of being human is we just sometimes have to put our head down and do the slog. And that's okay. 
can you do it while you're listening to your favorite 90s playlist and make it feel a whole lot better? I hope so. Right? I want that for you. I want all of your tasks to be joyful for you. Some of them just aren't. But may you source yourself with the strength and the good humor to get through them so that you can move on to the things that do feed your soul. Some of us need to reframe this idea that some tasks aren't great because our culture spends a lot of time complaining about them. I love doing the laundry. There's nothing like the smell of clean clothes and getting to listen to a podcast or watch a show while I fold the laundry. Does it sometimes feel overwhelming when there's 10 loads vomiting out of the dryer? Absolutely, it does feel overwhelming. I love cleaning the toilet. There is just nothing like taking the most disgusting toilet in the world and then you spend two minutes spiffying it up and it's a complete transformation. But I used to go into those tasks feeling really annoyed and resentful that I was the only one that did them. The only thing that changed before and after was my take on it. My ability to see these tasks as a wonderful gift to myself and my kids, this clean toilet, shiny, <laughs> smelling like lemons, right? And sometimes we laugh about that. In fact, I joke and tell my kids, like, I don't ever think that you're going to get to clean this toilet. These toilets that bring me just two minutes of joy to watch this transformation. And you can find other chores to do around this house. I will not let you clean this toilet. And they sometimes joke that, like, one day they're going to clean the toilet and I won't be able to do it. And, you know, that would be great. But it's how can you make the question is, how can you make these things more joyful? Because you gotta do them anyway. Okay, leave me comments. What burns you out? Do you feel overwhelmed? What are the things that overwhelm you? What are the feelings that come up when you feel overwhelmed? Where do you feel your overwhelm in your body? All of these things are part of your burnout journey. Knowing your burnout story is really important. And yet thinking about it, diving into it, exploring it doesn't always make you feel better. But starting the journey is really important and then you can work on transforming it. More to come on this topic. I really love this one. So let's keep, let's keep talking. I'm, I'm excited to hear your insights. Thank you for jumping in today and I'll see you next Wednesday for our live. Take care everybody. <laughs>